Hey, welcome back! This is the first video in my Creating a Campaign series. Now, this series has been requested several times by viewers and has certainly been a fun one for me to figure out as I had never really documented my, my processes before. But I'll go ahead and put a link to the playlist in the description down below. What I do is I start with a villain first, because that is how I get my campaign premise. Now, the villain tells me what the campaign is actually going to be about. This doesn't mean that the PCs will meet, or they might not even learn about the villain right away. They might not actually meet until the final showdown, but this is who is behind the curtains pulling the strings. In this video, I'll discuss how I quickly create the villain for my campaign, and I like to either use a retired PC or NPC from a previous campaign, or I can also start from scratch, obviously. But starting with an existing, of course, retired PC, or an NPC is just a bit easier, and it makes it more personal for the players who've probably encountered that character before. But it's going to be the same steps either way. A note though, if you do use a PC and it's not one of your own, um, it's best to make it one of your own, but otherwise make sure that the player has given you permission to use that character and make darn sure that they understand they're good, that that's going to be not a, you know, that the, that character is going to be bad. After all, you know, you don't want to stir up bad feelings, so it's good just to get their buy-in right away, or just don't use it, just use one of your own, or just use an uh, a NPC. You characters usually develop attachments for various NPCs, so it's easy enough just to twist one of them. Um, otherwise, you know, just start with a picture of a villain. Uh, a quick internet search turns up an endless supply of images just to choose from. Or I might even do a cartoon sketch if I have somebody in mind. But uh, I do really do enjoy uh, turning a PC or NPC into a villain. So, And most, though, I would uh, write just a single sentence for each of the following points. Now, because this is because I have to remember that I'm not writing a novel, just trying to get a handle on the main villain. So I do the same for some minor villains, too. I just, I, I have to not go overboard. If you decide to do this, just to tip, fair warning, incomplete sentences and half thoughts are great. Uh, if you put down too much, you get too many expectations, and your characters, of course, are going to make massive changes to everything you do anyway. So, you know, after all, most of your minor villains or the main villain's minions are going to be destroyed when the PCs meet them, so there's no real point in doing extra work. Uh, whether you're converting an existing player character, once again, with that original player's permission, or you're building a fallen hero from scratch or using an NPC, which might be the best way to do this. The first step is to give them a flaw that prevents them from making wise choices. Now, this is true even if they started as a PC. I would usually just uh, pick one of from one of the following on the list. I might pick arrogance. Uh, this includes overconfidence, self-righteousness. This is the hero that has always refused to listen to others or learn from their mistakes. You know, they're probably a little bit insecure. Uh, wrath is a good one. Now, this is for the hero that has an uncontrollable temper. The player has always played them as being the first one to rush into battle, quick to anger. They have to punish those wrongdoers, even if it hurts those around them. Another one, a good one, is obsession. Uh, they are focused action that the hero is trying to accomplish, no matter the cost to themselves or those around them. You know, it can even be for a perceived good reason. It is what they do that makes them bad. I actually played a uh, character once who was in search of an ancient library. They were obsessed with finding it. And when they did find it, um, just the, the character just locked themselves in and refused to ever come back out. Uh, the library just happened to have uh, resources for food and stuff, but... Eventually, I could see that character wandering back out as a lich, perhaps, because they were a wizard, obviously. Easiest one is probably just using hatred. Just that hero hates something, they become a villain because of hatred. Something of the world has upset them so much that they formed an almost irrational hatred of it. They won't listen to reason. They will work to avoid or destroy whatever it is, even if that thing could help them. What other flaws would you use? I mean, go ahead and throw a comment down below if you have some other th flaws that you like to throw out there for your villains. 
Uh, the next thing I like to do, though, is give my villain some positive supporting influence. Now, of course, that's easy if they were already a PC or NPC. But it's a really fun one for the if the other players, the original owner of the PC, perhaps, has a character that was once an ally of your new villain. Uh, perhaps they were a student or something. And if you don't want to make them too close, you can make this new villain the player's mentor's teacher or some nth degree of removal. They were always around during training, they were an, an, an older apprentice, something like that. Uh, but uh, somebody they would know by their impeccable reputation only and not actually know um, might be a way that you want to go. But this is not plot or armor for that PC, of course. If the character ends up dead, they end up dead. You know, you're rolling up a new character, you're trying to do a resurrection, you're, you know, whatever. Otherwise, it might be a good idea to have more than one PC as a former associate. Um, that's not a bad idea either. Otherwise, just interweave it into the plot. But if, if the character ends up dead, they have a journal. You know, whatever. You can, you can always make that work. The next step when I try to make my villain interesting is to create a positive influence in the villain to balance out their fatal flaw. Uh, some examples here are a good moral background. Uh, the villain is the hero in their own story, and they've perhaps probably been the hero up to this point. Now, they might regret their actions later. They might even try to redeem themselves later. That's totally up to you and the plot points that you want to put out there. I would advise against doing that too much, but it's definitely a possibility. Another example is their own ideals that they still follow. Uh, maybe they're still charitable towards a specific group, or they have a loyalty to a specific person. So that PC that uh, has that affiliation with them, they may still have some kind of loyalty there, which prevents them from just going out and just destroying them when they could. Uh, they might hold back. Uh, they might even still have a vow that they uphold. Uh, so this can, like I said, later can kind of set up a twist later. You know, when the PCs realize that their kindly old sage friend from the library is behind all the schemes. And like I said, they might not even meet them right away. That's totally up to you and the story that you and your players are creating. But um, give them some positive relationships. Like I said, if you're converting that, uh, it's easy enough to play on those relationships that already existed. The heroes are not going to give up on their former friend easily. They might even defend the villain when you have some new heroes come along. So you could have your players playing new characters and their old characters uh, are kind of standing in the way and protecting this villain from these new characters. And they're going to be a little bit reluctant to go against their old characters. So I mean, there's some interesting levels there that you could kind of explore if you want to. And of course, with the players buy in. Uh, so, but just don't go overboard with all that. Um, Sometimes brainstorming, I do go a little bit overboard. So, but like I said, there's some things. Sometimes with that stuff, I have to remind myself I'm not writing a novel, I'm not writing a story, I'm writing a just a brief adventure outline, brief adventure outline, and I have to remind myself of that word brief many, many times. Adventure outline. Uh, but another fun thing to do is to give the villain something to do such as horseback riding, sculpting, or something. The heroes burst in on the villain, and there he sits, crocheting a new throw blanket for the orphans. You know, if you want a bit of a twist. But uh, unless the former PC hero was suffering from some mental disorder, likely there was a series of events that pushed them over the edge. You know, and the simplest thing is to say it was the ending of the last campaign. For whatever reason, something happened that just gave him the shove. After that event, they can no longer live their lives as they had previously. They're unhappy, disillusioned, they want to strike out, and that just becomes the villain. Some of the PCs may have been there when it happened, or the new PCs that the players are playing, some of their mentors may have been there when that happened. So, like I said, that works really well if some of the PCs or the PCs' allies were once allies with this former villain. Uh, at this point, though, you know, the hero story and the villain story no longer intersects. It is definitely time to play with that new, villain's new story. So, and, you know, and you could write down just a few bullet points of things. You know, this is the unreasonable thing that he that he's doing now. Uh, think about those flaws. Think about those actions or those uh, people that he might be moving against all of a sudden. And that what was responsible? What was the thing that hurt him? 
uh, you know, they might start to steal stuff, break laws, whatever they do in their minds, they're doing it for the greater good. Uh, they might create a new enemy of their own. They might lose a loved one. You know, this should all tie back. This should, None of this is anything that you're sharing with the players, at least right away. This is all things that you're just jotting down. A word here, a sentence there, a half a sentence over there. You know, none of this is written in stone. It could all change as soon as the characters start to interact with the world. So, you know, keep that in mind that it all needs to stay fluid. But, uh, you know, and if your first of flaw isn't working for you, if your first reasoning, feel free to change it or augment it or add to it. You know, even if it's during the middle of, a, of the adventure and something just comes up that sounds better, just go in that direction. What you've written down is not Shakespeare. It can be changed. Uh, so, you know, the villain might have a hatred towards a particular group or thing. Like I said, that's the easiest motivation. Uh, they might even start to resent their former PC allies. So these former PC allies who are still kind of supporting the villain, he's resent the villain's now re resenting them. The player's new characters who have mentors with these PC allies might be starting to be sent on little missions to kind of do some investigations because these former PC allies, you know, have some thoughts or have some suspicions that they don't want to directly involve themselves in because... Uh, they don't want to anger or make their former friend uh, upset with them. But uh, just know that at this point that that hero, former hero or NPC is the villain, uh, and they cannot get out of the cycle by themselves. They are going to get a reaction. The conflict's going to escalate. It's going to get more and more evil, and it's going to continue on the path unless they're stopped. So even if the PCs were former allies, they won't be for much longer. Um, so, yeah, the actions of the villain will eventually come back to them personally, so you might even, once again, with player's permission, if they're their characters, have the former villain move against and hurt significantly one of the former uh, PCs, so that all the kind of suddenly becomes super personal to the player's new characters. So, and then really, that's kind of the start of your campaign, for me at least, is all of these events have kind of happened in the background, and there's a kind of maybe a brief little summary to kind of pick out where in the villain's uh, um, timeline there that I'm going to insert the new players, the new characters. And uh, yeah, so the players are going to have to learn what's happened and probably over the course of many adventures. But then they have to decide what to do with that information once they realize what is happening. You know, the players could just go straight out and try to kill the villain, stop him by any means necessary. You, If you don't want that to happen, yeah, there's things you might you know, have one of the former uh, characters intervene and uh, you know ask the players or the new characters not to. But once again, this is player agency. So even if, if you have this guy say, please don't go out, move against him, they're going to say, yeah, you're blinded. We need to move against him. Obviously, just have that character step back. You know, he's not the villain. He's uh, con he's conflicted or she's conflicted. So just have that, that character then step back. Players get to decide what happens to the villain. They might try to redeem the villain. Um, you know, whatever they think is necessary to stop the villain is what the players are going to do and what those new characters are going to do. But, of course, this is all fodder to create new villains. So. It, you win. Um, since you can't predict what your characters are going to do, you can come up with a couple of different villains. That way, if they sail upstream instead of downstream, you can just go in that direction instead, or just move the villain. And, you know, if you do create a couple of villains and one doesn't get used, not a big deal. You got another campaign coming up eventually, you could plop them down and um, I would love a comment down below on the villains that you have created. What made them interesting? What worked with them? What didn't work? Well, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.